You're listening to Milwaukee Mafia, your weekly podcast dose of Wisconsin Mafia and true crime history. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Milwaukee Mafia podcast, episode number two. I'm Eric Walterkent. I'm Gavin Schmidt. And today's topic is... Well, actually, we got a mailbag. We got a mailbag. We got a mailbag. How did we get a mailbag? Well, magic, you know, (laughs) somebody already submitted a question. That's unbelievable. I know, (laughs) but they did. All right. So what is the magical mailbag question? All right. This question comes from Justin. Justin. Yep. Justin writes, what can you tell us about the Italian origins of the earliest mafia presence in Milwaukee? Okay. And what can we tell them about that? Because I can tell you something. I believe that they settled in the Third Ward Mm -hmm. after a fire erupted that burned the entire Third Ward that drove all the poor Irish people out of the Third Ward. Mm -hmm. And... By 1915, they well, this fire occurred in 1892, and by 1915, they have had built it up to a Italian mm-hmm. paradise. Let's call it that. Okay, <laughs> paradise might be a bit bit much, but yes, yeah, that's very good. Yeah, it completely rebuilt it. I do listen. Okay, and that served as a nice recap there. So thank you for that. I did my best. Yeah, should we expand on that a little bit? I, as long as I'm not expanding, no, on it. Not if you. you want to expand on it, go for it. No, I'm not expanding. No, you don't, you don't, you don't, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just, just, you're, the, you're the host here. I mean, I don't know. Expand away. Okay. All right, Justin. So I'm going to uh, get into this a little bit. Try not to go too down into it. But uh, the mafia, as I think most people know, comes from Sicily. And Sicily is an island off the coast of Italy, the southern part of Italy. And What I find interesting is that each different mafia group in the United States, whether it's Milwaukee or New York or Chicago or Los Angeles or any major city that has one, they come from different cities in Sicily. And I find that fascinating because it's like entire villages picked up in Sicily and moved to these other cities. Now, in Milwaukee... The primary city that people came from is Santa Flavia. And I may be pronouncing that wrong. It might be Santa Flavia. I mean, I don't, I'm not, uh, I don't speak Italian, so I apologize. That may lead to some problems, <laughs> but that's the primary thing. The majority of people who are Italian in Milwaukee came from Santa Flavia. And I think that's fascinating because there's probably more people in Milwaukee today who are descended from Santa Flavia than there are people in Santa Flavia. Uh, That's crazy. I know. Let me interject with this. Do you feel like, so I feel like there's a good reason for that. Mm -hmm. One person from Santa Flavia moves, settles in Milwaukee, Mm -hmm. and then they say, hey, I'm here. You should come here to somebody else. And and, and it just kind of, it balloons like that, where now you have that one person brought 15 people. Well, that person brings 15 more people, and that's how it kind of happens. I'd say you're absolutely right. That is really fascinating to me that that does actually happen, but it does make sense. Yeah. I don't know exactly what everybody's motivations were, but yeah, I think you're onto something there. I think for whatever reason, the original people picked Milwaukee. And yes, so they started inviting their brothers, their cousins, their whatever. And this is, I mean, these Sicilian towns are very small. So everybody is somebody's cousin. So yeah, sooner or later, more and more people move over. And it finally, it was like 3,000 people who had picked up and moved to Milwaukee by the end of all this. Or, you know, or their children or whatever. So it was a sizable number of people. Just about all of them are related in one way or another. I mean, maybe like third cousins, but still. The other thing I find funny about that is is that you say these people actually came from Italy. Mm -hmm. Where I would envision like they would come from Italy to, say, Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then from Chicago move up to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Which is not what happened. No. And that's strange to me. That's not unheard of that somebody would, you know, live in Chicago for a couple of years, not like it, and then move on to Milwaukee or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that certainly happens. But no, it seems like the vast majority, like Milwaukee was their destination. That's that, that is really fascinating. Yeah. And I, I can tell you why. Oh, well, 
great. Let's get into this. <laughs> All right. Let's stop ca- making predictions on why and let's get into the actual reason why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Santa Flavia is like on the coast of Sicily, uh, which actually a lot of cities are because it's an island. They've got two big businesses there. One is grapefruit and the other is fishing. Now, grapefruit, that's not going to do you any good in Milwaukee. When they started moving, they had this idea that Milwaukee was going to be this great fishing place. They could start these fishing businesses because it's on Lake Michigan. Makes sense. Makes sense. This ended up not working out as well as they thought because they were used to being in the Mediterranean, uh, which is significantly different than being in Milwaukee. (laughs) I don't think they fully grasp the weather that you get, you know, it's not, uh, you can't fish year round. Well, you can fish year round, but I mean, not like on a commercial basis. And uh, it ended up not working. And some people who settled in Milwaukee did end up later on moving out to California to Lake San Jose, um, where they did successfully become fishermen. But yeah, that's that was one of the main reasons they chose Milwaukee is because they thought, oh, this is a, a prime place to start a fishing business. Interesting. And, and uh, yeah, it didn't always... Not very good research done there. No, but Sicily was always just a very poor community. Not community. That's not right. It's a whole island. But it's a <laughs> but it's a it was, it's a it's a poor place. I mean, southern Italy in general is is always just poverty. And I don't know exactly why this was the time that they decided they were going to pick up and move. Why they didn't do it twenty years sooner or whatever. But they had to go somewhere and. Milwaukee just seemed right. And again, like I said, other villages picked other places. It's mm-hmm. it's like you could say that if you're from Santa Flavia, it's a very good chance that you picked Milwaukee to settle in. And if you're in Milwaukee, it's a very good chance you're from Santa Flavia. There's just a strong overlap. And it's like this everywhere. Madison in comparison, Madison has a much smaller Sicilian population, but same thing. They came from a village called San Giuseppe. And, That's and, so weird. And it's, and it's the same thing. Almost everybody there is from San Giuseppe, and almost everybody in San Giuseppe chose Madison. Why? I don't know. I don't know why individual villages picked individual cities, but that's how it worked. So now, like, Santa Flavia, is this a place that still exists today? It or does, is, Okay. Yeah. How big is Santa Flavia? Not big. Do you know a population number? Uh, I right. don't. I don't know exactly. I mean, it's a few thousand at most. It's really. It's not big. I mean, it's only a couple of square miles. It's a very small village. Now, now let's go over to the Milwaukee side. What is the Italian population of Milwaukee today? It'd be hard to say at this point because so many have married in, and you know, they're, oh, they're, yeah. they're you know okay. half or a quarter Italian now. Um, but yeah, like I said, at one point there were like three thousand. Italians in Milwaukee, like just pure Italian. Now, I mean, again, the number would be higher, but they wouldn't be like pure Italian. Yeah. All right, Gavin. So you were talking, you touched base on the fact that these Italians that came here were fishermen, Mm -hmm. but you also mentioned that they were grapefruit. Can you go into that a little bit further? Yeah. So again, like obviously when you move to Milwaukee, you're not going to be growing a lot of grapefruit. That's not something we do. But uh, it's, it's interesting that grapefruit was something they did in Santa Flavia, and I presume they still do today, because grapefruit plays a really important role in mafia history, which I'm sure this is blowing your mind here. Why Why would it? <laughs> so on, on Sicily, like they've got grapefruit, they've got lemons, they've got oranges, they've got all these, uh, these citrus fruits that they grow. And that's kind of one of the ways that the mafia got really big in Sicily was they would take up jobs as like security guards at these orchards. They didn't call them some security guards. They had other words for that, but essentially that's what they were. And they found out that, you know, hey, this is a good way to make money. We can be like, if you pay us, we'll protect your orchards. But if you don't pay us enough, you might come back in the morning and mysteriously your trees are cut down. Ironically, they were protecting them from them, right? Yeah, they were protecting (laughs) them from themselves. Yeah. So I'm curious, what kind of systems did they do? Yeah, you know, I mean, this is just basic extortion. Like when they came here, they weren't doing it with grapefruit, but they would do it with other things. We'll get into this more in in future episodes, but there were things like called like black hand letters and things like that, where they would be like, hey, it's a really nice business you got there. If you pay us, we'll make sure your business is okay. (laughs) Which, of course, the owners are, well, there's nothing wrong with my business. But if they don't pay, suddenly their windows are smashed. (laughs) So, yeah, I mean, that's a whole other topic. But this is a running theme of how the mafia starts out. It's not a well-oiled machine early on. It's very brute force, just breaking things. So now would you say the people, okay, so the people that were doing 
this grapefruit scheme in Santa Flavia. Yeah. Right. I yeah. said that right. Yep. Okay. Were they? Do you feel like those people? Were the ones coming here and then starting the mafia or was it just some Italian guy that wasn't in the mafia that just came here and, I don't know, saw an opportunity to yeah know what the mafia was doing back in Santa Flavia and being like, well, we could do this here. Yeah, I cannot give you 100% certainty on this because I'm going to have to say this again and again, the mafia doesn't keep records <laughs> but but uh, it is my belief that there is that direct connection there that the first people in Milwaukee who were mafia members were already mafia members in Sicily okay they could have been doing these grapefruit schemes they could have been doing whatever else but there's there's a direct connection between what they were doing there and what they were doing here i don't think that people in Milwaukee started this idea from scratch i'm pretty sure these were already people who were Again, 99% of the people who came over, great people. But that 1%, you know, they come over with their cousins and their brothers and whatever, and they're going to start the same crap all over again. And it makes sense, like, just being with knowing what the mafia is like, that these people that came here could have been people that were running from the Santa Flavia mafia because they did something that would get them killed over there. So they're like, I'm getting the hell out of here. They get over here and they're like... I don't have any skills other than what I was doing over there, so I might as well do it here. Yeah, that's entirely possible. And yeah, and, and I, like I said, I can't draw the direct connection because I don't have records of who was a member of the mob in Santa Flavia. I don't know that, but I do know who was a member in Milwaukee. And these are these are guys who were already coming over. They were like sixty years old. So I'm fairly confident that they were doing the same crap, crap. when they were, you know, twenty, thirty, forty years old in Sicily. Okay, so I think you said you had one other point that you wanted to touch on, or... I do. It's very brief, but just to kind of tie this together. So Santa Flavia is this primary place that uh, people uh, came from, but there was a secondary city that, that some people in Milwaukee came from, which is a city called Pritzi. It was a minority group. It wasn't... They weren't very uh, influential, but it's interesting that the mafia from its beginnings up to its... Well, I don't know about its ends, but as far as we can track it, was primarily from Santa Flavia, but briefly in like the 1940s, the people from Pritzi kind of had higher rankings in the mafia. This is something I'll get into down the road, but it's interesting to see where this flip happened, where this minority group is suddenly important and then it flips back the other way again. So there is some struggle. Like people are very territorial about where they're from. It's not just like you're from the mafia, I'm from the mafia, we're cool. It's, you're from the mafia in this city, I'm in the mafia in this city, so we're not cool. Are you saying, like, at one point in time, one group became in charge, and then the other group regained control? Or yes. was, it, was there, like, blocking of heads between these two parties? Because they're like, no, you can't control this because you're from Prixie or whatever. Yeah. And the other, well, you're from Santa Flavia, we don't want anything to do with you. That's the way I understand it. I understand that there's there's the the big group and there's the small group, and they they ultimately become the same group. They end up, you know, because the, they figure out as a lot of groups do, they figure out that working together is better for everybody than fighting all the time. But yeah, I I do think there's these these two groups start out at odds with each other, and that's what you'll see a lot of like the early mob murders in Milwaukee are seeing who is going to end up being the big guys in town. So uh, Santa Flavia ends up winning, which I think is because they have the numbers. numbers. Yeah. yeah. But there is a little back and forth for a while. So the Prixie side, do, am I saying that right? Pritzy. Pritzy. Yeah. The Pritzy side, does anybody ever get, or I don't know, maybe we're spoiling a later story. No, but do the, do the Prixy, is there ever a high ranking Prixie yes. member out there? Yeah. So, so they they do get to a point where they can yeah, that's, get high that's, up. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying like in the 40s, like the the boss in Milwaukee is he's from Pritz. Well, I don't know if he is, but like his family is. So yeah, briefly like the top guy in Milwaukee is from the other one, but then like I say, it flips back, back the other the way. way. Uh, it's interesting to see that there is that little rivalry even in the small town of Milwaukee. Milwaukee yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Cool. All right. So I think we are through this. Yeah. Again, anybody has any questions, hit Gavin up at, check us out on our website. Yeah. We hope you tune in for the next episode. Yeah. We promise it's going to be really good. Well, thank you everybody for tuning into the Milwaukee Mafia podcast and we'll see you next week. 
Thanks for tuning in to the Milwaukee Mafia podcast. Join us next week for another look back at Wisconsin Mafia and true crime history.